Welcome to our revision lecture on IS-19 employee benefits. Before we start with the lecture, I want to discuss the legend that I've included on your screen. Now, when I make use of the abbreviation EB, this stands for employee benefits, LT, long term, and ST, short term. Now, what are employee benefits? This will be all forms of consideration paid by an entity to employees in exchange for services or work rendered by the employees. And this can also include termination of employment. Now, the types of services that can be provided by the employees to the entity can be full-time, part-time, permanent, casual, temporary. And when we look at all forms of considerations, this will be benefits or salaries. And benefits can be paid either to employees, dependents, or even beneficiaries. Now, IS-19 distinguish between four different categories of employee benefits. One, our short-term employee benefits. Two, our post-employment benefits. Three, other long-term employment benefits. And four, termination benefits. Now, short-term employee benefits. This will be settled within 12 months of year-end in which the employee renders the service. Now, a very important example that you need to think about is possible non-monetary benefits that can be paid by the employer. Now, remember short-term employee benefits can be wages, salaries, paid annual leave, paid sick leave, profit sharing and bonuses, and then an important one, non-monetary benefits. But what is a non-monetary benefit? If, for example, the entity pays for meals for the employees, now remember they pay the meal directly, this will be a non-monetary benefit that you need to recognize. And important to identify the difference between your other long-term employee benefits and your short-term employee benefits. Your short-term employee benefits will be settled within 12 months of year-end. Now, our other long-term employee benefits will be settled after 12 months. Therefore, guys, when you think about this, this will be part of your non-current liabilities. But for SICAS purposes, our other long-term employee benefits will be excluded from the syllabus. Therefore, you do not need to know this, but you need to be able to understand and distinguish the differences. Let's get back to our short-term employee benefits. Now, to recognize a short-term employee benefit, you will have to debit your short-term employee benefit cost in your profit or loss and credit either bank or a liability. Remember the liability you need to identify. Will this be settled within 12 months? Now, when we look at our short-term paid absences, this can either be accumulating paid absences or non-accumulating paid absences. Now, you need to read the information carefully. Accumulating paid absences will be carried forward and can be used in future. Therefore, we will have to provide for this and recognize a liability. Now, we will have to recognize the expense when the employees render the service that increases their entitlement to future paid absences. Now, my recommendation with any accumulating absences, you need to identify from the scenario provided what is the number of days that you need to provide for and two, what is the rate that you need to provide for per day then you need to read the information provided. You need to identify what is the opening balance number of days, what is the utilized number of days. Remember, utilized, used, how many days have been used, and how many days accrued for the current year. Used, you will have to deduct, take out, and 
This will result in your closing balance. Then non-accumulating paid absences, they will not be carried forward. Therefore guys, they will be expensed when the absence occur. Profit sharing and bonus. Now you may only recognize a profit sharing or a bonus when there is a present legal or constructive obligation to make payment and if the estimate is reliable. Now very important with this one guys, therefore you will have to read the information provided. We are going to discuss present legal constructive obligation in our IS37 lecture in detail. Now a present obligation exists when and only when the entity has no realistic alternative but to make the payment. Then your journal entry will be exactly the same. You will have to debit your short-term employee benefits in your profit or loss and credit either your bank or your liability. Now when we look at our disclosure, the disclosure will be the same throughout our recording. This will be the same for our post-employee benefits as well. You will have to recognize the profit before tax note, include a heading employee benefit expenses with your short-term, long-term defined contribution plan as well as your termination benefits. Now let's move on to our post-employment benefits. This will be payable after completion of employment and this is not termination benefits. This will be payable after completion, but this is not a termination benefit. Now, the standard indicates to us that there is defined contribution funds as well as defined benefit funds. Now, remember from our SICAS syllabus, you do not have to know how to recognize and measure your defined benefit fund. You need to be able to distinguish between the differences though. Now, our defined contribution fund, this will be the entity's obligation to contribute to the fund on behalf of the employees. Therefore, guys, this is a fund that is already registered with the FSB and we have different entities contributing to this fund on behalf of all of their employees. Now, what is important to identify is that the risk relating to the investment will fall on the employee. But when you think about your journal entry, you will still have to debit your expense in your profit or loss and credit your accrual or bank if being paid out. And if they indicate to you that the contribution will be recognized to the asset, you need to debit your asset. Therefore, you will have to read. Now, a defined benefit plan. Now, what is the difference between these two? A defined benefit plan is where we have an entity that instructs another entity in the financial services to develop a plan specifically. Now, this is specifically for this entity. Therefore, the plan is specifically developed for the relevant entity. And the employees of this entity will contribute to this specific plan. Okay. The entity's obligation will be to provide agreed benefits and the actuarial and investment risk will fall on the employer. Okay. Again guys, if payable beyond 12 months, you need to identify long term and you will have to discount. Other long term employee benefits is excluded from the syllabus. But guys, let's just have a look at basic examples. This can be long term paid absences such as sabbatical leave, long-term service benefits, or disability benefits. Now, termination benefits, a very important section. 
This will be due to a result of termination of employment before retirement. Now, what is important to identify is that the employer should offer the termination benefit to the employee. Therefore, our employer's decision to terminate before normal retirement. And remember, guys, this offer can either result in involuntary retrenchments or voluntary retrenchments. Now, voluntary, this means that the employee can choose to take the offer or not. Involuntary, there is no choice. Okay. Now, our employee's decision to accept an offer of the benefits in exchange for the termination. And this shall result in an obligation for our entity. Now, we may only recognize the liability and expense at the earlier of either one when the entity can no longer withdraw the offer of the termination benefits. Therefore, again, guys, remember, we've indicated that there has to be an offer to the employees. Now, we may only recognize the liability or expense at the earlier of when the entity can no longer withdraw the offer or to when the entity recognizes cost relating to the restructuring within the scope of RS37 and invoices were paid. How do we measure the amount? Well, the amount shall be measured in terms of the nature of the employee benefit. If this is a post-employment benefit plan, we will have to debit our termination benefits in our profit or loss and credit our defined benefit obligation. When wholly settled within 12 months after the end of the reporting year, we will debit our termination benefits and we will credit our accrued termination benefits in our statement of financial position. Now, guys, important, let's just quickly recap on the termination benefits. The entity has to offer the employee the termination benefits. Okay? Now, we may recognize the termination benefit at the earlier of when the entity can no longer withdraw the offer or when restructuring falls within the scope of IS37 and payments have been made. And then measurement either defined benefit obligation or accrued termination. Now the question, when can the entity no long, longer withdraw the offer of termination benefits? If it is voluntary, at the earlier of when the employee accepts the offer or when there is a restriction on the entity's ability by law. Therefore, you will have to read the information. If involuntary, your key word here is a plan. Remember, if it's involuntary, a plan has to be developed by the entity on how they are going to do this. And then the entity has to meet all of the following criteria. Actions to complete the plan should indicate no significant changes will be made to the plan. Two, the plan has to identify all of the details such as number of employees, job classifications, locations and expected completion dates. And three, our employees should be able to determine and calculate the exact employment benefit relating to the employee's termination benefits that they will receive. Therefore, guys, when you look at this, the difference voluntarily the employee can accept or not accept the offer. Involuntarily, the employee doesn't have a choice. And we need to identify that there is a plan. Now, this is IS19. Briefly, ensure that you know this page. It's quite a lot of theory. And please watch the examples that I've included for you as well.